Hi everyone, welcome to this video. So in this video, we are going to discuss the core principles of Spring, which is dependency injection, also known as DI, and inversion of control, also known as IOC. Before we understand and explore DI and IOC, let's understand the traditional mode of developing a Java application or how we usually write Java code. So here you can see three classes, class A, class B, and a main class, which has the main method. Class B is a dummy class, which has a public method run task. Then class A has a method do something. In class A, we are creating a new object of class B using new class B. Then we are calling the run task method of class B. So this is how we generally write classes where classes are required to talk to each other. So we create objects and then we call the methods on that object. We usually have a main method where we uh, create the root object or the main class where we initialize the main class, let's say class A in this case, and then we call a single method, let's say A do something which will trigger the execution of your application. So if you understand the flow, we have a main method and uh, then we create a new object, we call a method and when we call that method, this class or this object will create another object because it is dependent on class B. So it will create a new object of class B. Similarly, let's say if class B has a dependency, then it will create the objects of those dependencies. So you see the flow that application is creating the objects of dependencies as and when needed. Second thing to notice in this example is that we are creating the object where we need that object. So we are using the new keyword to create the new object. In this case, there are two terms that we need to understand. The first is dependency. Now class A is dependent on class B. So class B is a dependency. All right. Then when we create the new object, this new object code is hard coded. Second thing is that the code that is creating the new object is hard coded. It means it cannot be changed. There is no way to override it. At least no simple way to override it. Let's say at runtime or at a later point of time. So this part is hard coded. It means that it will always create a new object of class B. So the application is responsible for managing the dependencies to identify the dependency, then to create a new object of the dependency. Now class A is dependent on class B and it is creating a new object of class B because it needs the object of class B because it needs to call the run task in this example. And this process of uh, initializing the right dependency is called the wiring because we are wiring different classes and different objects together. But this is the important thing to understand is that this is the responsibility of application to identify the dependencies, to initialize the dependencies and to wire them together. And this is how we simply write a small Java application. There is nothing wrong in that. At least when we consider a small Java application, let's say we are uh, just writing a POC, we are creating a POC. All right, that's fine. But when we consider an enterprise grade application, a production grade application, then these things will have some negative impact that we are going to discuss next. The problem with this kind of new object creation is that the classes are tightly coupled which means class a and class b they are tightly coupled as of now in the system there is a single class b so there is no problem as such but let's say in future we find a better implementation maybe class b represents let's say a service that finds some data items from the database or from let's say from the cloud whatever it is but in the future, let's say we find a better implementation. So we created a new class, class C with the same functionality, but, but with a different implementation. Now, if we want to use class C, we have a single option 
that we'll have to change this code and we'll have to write something like class C. So we'll have to make this kind of code change in class A because the object creation part and the wiring part is hard coded. Now imagine there are tens of classes and all of them are using class B in this way, then we'll have to change the, the same code all over the place. So this is an overhead and this is under the umbrella of maintenance. This code is not maintainable, we say. All right. The second problem is because this part is hard coded, if we want to write, let's say, a JUnit test case for class A, which should cover the functionality of do something only, which, which is the unit of test. So the test code will cover only the functionality of class A, in this case, do something. But the problem is we cannot control the instantiation of class B. If we want to provide a mock object for class B, it, it will be very difficult. So it, this kind of logic or this kind of development, this kind of style makes testing a bit difficult. All right. Now that we understand the traditional model, the concept of dependencies and object instantiation and wiring, let's move on to understand what is DI dependency injection and what is inversion of control. So dependency injection is the process of injecting dependencies. That means we tell Spring the different classes or different objects and their dependencies via configuration. How we provide that configuration, we will discuss that later. But theoretically, we have some configuration where we tell Spring that these are my classes, these are my objects and their dependencies as well. Then what Spring will do as a framework, it will initialize the classes, it will initialize or create the objects of those dependencies and it will inject them or it will wire them. So whatever thing that we are doing here, creating the new object, then wiring them together, it will be done by the Spring framework. So that is the dependency injection. So dependency injection is simply the process of injecting dependencies which means creating the new object of classes and wiring them together where we need it. Now there are mainly three ways in spring of dependency injection. Number one is called constructor injection. In constructor injection we inject the dependencies via constructors. We will see an example later. The second thing is setter injection. In setter injection, we inject the dependencies using setter methods. And the third one is public static factory methods. So let's say if we have a public static factory method in a class which creates uh, a new object or which accepts a new object, we can do that. We can inject the dependencies using public static factory methods as well. So this is construct. Sorry, this is dependency injection, which means injecting the dependencies of different classes and different objects. What is inversion of control? So as we discussed that in this mode or in this style, what we are doing, the flow is something like we start from the main method, then we create uh, the root object or the entry point of the system. Then from there on, the classes will create the objects of their dependencies and wire them. But in case of Spring, what we do, we tell Spring what objects do we need and their dependencies. And it is the responsibility of the framework to initialize the object, to create the new objects and inject them wherever they are needed. So this is basically the opposite flow. The overall flow has been inverted. Instead of us creating the objects and wiring them together, it is the framework that's doing the same thing. This is called the principle of inversion of control. 
where framework is responsible for creating the new objects and wiring them together. So these are the core principles of Spring Framework Dependency Injection and Inversion of Control. Till now, we have not covered anything related to Spring, uh, anything or any specific code related to Spring. This is all theory, but in the next video or in the later videos, we will cover everything one by one. Now let's see what do we mean by constructor injection and setter injection. So in this example, let's say if we want to implement the constructor injection so what we can do we'll have to refactor the code because we don't need to create the object anymore this is the responsibility of spring framework so we can remove this but we still need an object so what we will do spring says that you should declare a variable let's say ref of class b type then you should write a constructor in the class And this constructor will accept the object of type class P. So something like this. This dot ref equals to ref. That's it. So if we want to use the constructor injection, then we'll have to write a constructor in the class where we need the object. So we are declaring the dependency that we are dependent on class B but we are not creating the object of class B. Instead, we have a constructor that accepts an object of type class B. So at runtime, what Spring will do, it will see that class A is dependent on class B. So it will create a new object of class B and inject that object to this constructor and class A will have a valid object of class B. And we can simply call the method or whatever we are doing with class B. So this is called constructor injection. All right. Now, if we have to refactor the same thing to use the setter injection, then what we can do, let me remove the constructor. So we still have the property class B and let's generate the setters and getters for ref that's it so we have the property class b we call it a property and then we created the setter and getter for the property ref now in this case spring will see that class a is dependent on class b but because we are using setters and getters so it will use the setter method to create a new object and to pass that object because it will call the set ref on class A and it will pass a new object of class B. So basically, Spring will inject the dependency using the setter method. That's why it's called setter injection. All right. So that's how dependency injection works in Spring. Uh, this code will not run because it doesn't know how to create a new object of class B. This is something that Spring will do. And in the uh, next videos we will see how to set up spring framework in a java code base and how to do everything all right thanks for watching